In this first video for the urinary system, we'll look at the anatomical structures and examine a very important part of the kidney, the nephron, at a microscopic level. The kidneys are two bean-shaped organs that are located in the space behind the peritoneal membrane. Since the liver takes up quite a bit of real estate in the right upper abdominal quadrant, the right kidney sits slightly lower than the left. Each kidney has a tube-like structure coming off of it called a ureter, which leads to the urinary bladder where urine will be stored until it is excreted. From the bladder, urine leaves the body out the urethra. This is the case for both males and females. However, the female urethra is shorter in length. Overall, the gross anatomy of the kidney is not too complicated. The outermost part is called the renal capsule, which is a tough, protective connective tissue layer. Next, we find the renal cortex, and deep to that is the renal medulla that contains the renal pyramids and the renal columns. The renal pyramids are the triangular shaped structures, and the columns are the spaces between them. At the base of the pyramids, you'll find the renal papillae. This is where the urine will pass through from the collecting ducts that I'll discuss shortly. From the renal papillae, the urine then moves into the minor calyces, to the major calyces, and then into the renal pelvis. From the renal pelvis, urine will enter the ureters. One extends from each kidney and flows into the urinary bladder where it is stored. This image represents one pyramid and illustrates the position of the nephrons, the functional units of the kidney within them. You can also see the collecting ducts as, the, as they empty through the renal papillae into the minor calyx. This brings us to the very important functional structures in the kidneys called the nephrons. Each kidney has about one million of these to get the work of the filtering of the blood and creating urine accomplished. There are two types of nephrons, cortical and juxtamedullary. The cortical nephrons make up the bulk of these structures and they are responsible for the processes that produces the urine to be excreted from the body. The juxtamedullary nephrons play an important role in maintaining the salinity in the space within the medulla that plays a critical role in maintaining water balance in the body. There are two parts to the nephron, the renal corpuscle and the renal tubule. The renal tubules differ between the cortical and the juxtamedullary nephrons in that the cortical nephrons have short tubules and the tubules of the juxtamedullary nephrons extend deeper into the medullary space. Starting with the renal corpuscle, this is the structure where filtration of the blood plasma occurs. Remember that blood cells are too large to pass through most membranes in the body. The image on the left is a nice detailed illustration and the one on the right demonstrates what the renal corpuscle looks like under microscopy. This structure is open so that you can see inside of the glomerular capsule called Bowman's capsule. Glomerulus comes from the Latin word glomulus or glomus meaning ball of yarn and refers to the intricate network of capillaries located within Bowman's capsule. In a previous unit, different types of capillaries were discussed and you may remember that one type was a fenestrated capillary. Fenestrations are little windows that allow for the passage of substances versus the tight junctions found in continuous capillaries. These openings permit the glomerular capillaries to be more permeable. However, they're not so large as to allow the passage of red blood cells. In fact, blood in the urine is an indicator that something may be malfunctioning in the kidneys. Another key structure that plays a role in the nephron's ability to filter is its basement membrane. This basement membrane prohibits the passage of large proteins, though amino acids can pass. Finding protein in the urine upon urinalysis is also an indicator of kidney issues. Lastly, the component of the filtration membrane that is crucial is the work performed by specialized cells called podocytes. There's an image in your notes under the filtration heading. They help to filter the smallest particles. 
Bowman's capsule, the space, opens into the tubules. They are arranged in the following order. Proximal convoluted tubule, nephron loop, and the distal convoluted tubule. The collecting ducts are not part of the tubule, but they are the structures that will receive urine from many renal tubules. The function and roles each plays will be discussed in detail in the next video. There's a network of capillaries that surrounds each tubule. This is essential for the nephron to perform its function. It is pressure differences and the concentration of various ions, sodium being very important, that drive the movement of solutes, wastes, and water in and out of the renal tubules. Think of this arrangement as having three compartments, all of which play an important role in determining what remains in the body, the blood capillaries, and what is excreted. The separate compartments are, first, the space inside the renal tubule, secondly, the interstitial space, and lastly, the space inside the paratubular capillaries. The concentration of various ions and related pressures in each compartment are the driving forces for movement of substances in and out of the renal tubules and the capillaries. Scientists use the simplified two-compartment model, just tubule and capillary, to assess renal function, and pharmaceutical drug developers use it to predict drug efficacy.